in the nearly uh, 10 years I've been here, um, the locals have always been super cool with me. Um, I know they're supposed to hate hollies and everything, and, and, and there is some of that, yeah, of course. A lot of that music centers around that. Um, unfortunately, they're just, you know, history is, uh, has been fucked with it some, to some degree. So it's hard for people to know the real story. But um, yeah, despite that, they've always been really good to me. Like um, welcoming and not, uh, not dicky at all. It's uh, it's always nice. Maybe they know I'm uh, married to a local girl uh, by osmosis. Maybe they somehow pick that up. Maybe if it's a frequency thing. <clears throat> the um, speaking of frequency, I talked about it before. Whenever I turn the camera on, or even sometimes take pictures, or really anything a little green light goes on on my phone and what that means is that you're being recorded or pictures are being taken of you or something when you install a lot of your apps and even the operating software you probably use on your phone you agree to uh to basically let them do whatever they want um it's funny when you read some of that stuff I don't because I know it's all fucked and you either agree to it and deal with it or you don't agree with it and you don't use any of it. It's um, it's Satan, you know, it's uh, contracts, terms and conditions, everything evil does is in contracts. So uh, yeah, they have this thing where, I mean, if you, if you look at it when you're installing something, it's kind of funny. It's like you give us the right to format, collect and send your emails and record and all this other stuff. So it was just like a lot of times when you're just sitting there, you, you know, you, the green light will come on your phone and then you're being recorded. But beyond that too, like usually it's listening to you like all the time. And I'm sure like all your devices are. We really only have uh, phones and some iPads that we don't even use, but those are the only real devices we have these days. Everything that's online with, you know, smart appliances. Your fucking fridge is probably listening to you, you know? But I'm reminded of this sometimes uh, when something will come up on my YouTube, on my YouTube feed. There was a, uh, in the 1980s, there was a production company that used to do a lot of the TV shows. And whenever the logo would come up at the end, there's like a logo of like a dog. And there was a, a, a voice that would say, sit, ubu, sit. Good dog. So I walk around the house saying this. I don't know why, I just do. I do a lot of weird stuff. Um, and sometimes me as home, I feel better about it because at least, you know, I'm not talking to myself. But, um... So I'm looking at through my YouTube last night and I just did a video about how they uh, how they don't show you the stuff you want to watch and they fill your feet up with crap and if you watch one thing that they'd rather have you watching they'll give you everything from that genre and they'll hide more of the, the stuff you really like I was, that video came up for uh, Family Ties an old TV show with Michael J. Fox and it was a documentary on a a very special episode of Family Ties. I'm like, it's kind of weird. Why did this get, why did this get uh, promoted to me? You know. So I'm like, I'm just gonna watch this. Something about it piqued my interest. So I start watching it, and about halfway through, they start going into the guy that wrote the episode, his production company, and you guessed it, it's the Sit Ubu Sit production company they don't say it they just show the logo and the words uh sit ubu sit i screenshotted it uh for the uh, put it up there so um yeah they, they definitely heard me talking in the house and i mean this happens all the time uh music like uh 
I used to listen to the radio a lot, uh, local Hawaii radio. And um, whenever I'd go onto my Spotify, it would give me all these suggestions of uh, things to listen to that I I just heard that morning, you know, on the radio, walking around, walking around the house. Now they do this under the guise of advertising because they want to make your targeted ads more perfect so that they they get exactly what you want which is kind of you know stupid anyway because like if you go you buy a a movie or you know a hard media video game or something they're going to advertise you that thing that you just bought a lot of times so that that doesn't really make a lot of sense i mean i know that i know the thinking is well we can sell you things similar yeah, but a lot of times you don't. They don't. They just give me the exact thing. Like what I was just saying with the Spotify thing. You know, I've heard, uh, listen to local Hawaii rock radio. I heard, uh, you know, Def Leppard, Motley Crue, whatever. Uh, they give me, uh, you put it in my Spotify playlist. Or send me an ad to my merch to tell me Def Leppard's on tour with Motley Crue, actually. Oh, they were. Um, so that's kind of the same product. Ultimately, that's just an excuse. You know why they want to listen to everything you say. Um, and I think what they do is they have like these trawlers. Just like you put one out in the water. That like kind of feels around the water for stuff. They're looking for certain words, certain bad words, certain keywords. You know, of course, to help them find people they want to find when they want to find them. Um, and it, there's a whole thing like I don't care if they're listening because I'm not doing anything wrong well you don't know what they're listening for you know you could be thinking you're not doing anything wrong but you could be talking like you are you know so it's not I mean none of it's good there, there's no scenario in which that shit is good of them listening in on everything you know the Patriot Act came about because of the uh, 7-11 or 311 being an inside job because the Patriot Act. Fear is a really easy way to control people, like I always say. So after that event, they were like, look, these guys, obviously these guys are out there. You know, they're gonna come back and crash your plane into your house. We need to record everything. And the population's like, yeah, yeah, go for it, go for it, yeah, yeah. And then pass all these things, like a Patriot Act. And uh... Now, the thing is, right, you'd say, well, if they're all so, all powerful why can't they just do it why do they need our permission because evil works this way in this cosmic weird spiritual world way where they need to know that they, they need you to know they're doing it to you they need to float the idea out in front of you and um you have to agree to it in some way now sometimes agreeing to it is just saying nothing or just not you know vocalizing any dissent That's good enough for them to take that as uh, you're agreeing to it. You know, so uh, when they're doing something like passing the Patriot Act, George Bush, um, he goes out, talks about it, goes through uh, the lawmakers, and everyone's for it, you know? Media, the people on the street, we're all being told that this is happening. And uh, is that cool with everyone? Yeah? Okay. Well, we're doing it. That's how they work with everything. Evil is all contracts, terms, and conditions. The thing with evil, though, is there's not a specific way they have to float these ideas out in front of you. There's no specific way they have to tell you. That's why they hide it in fucking movies. You know, it sounds incredibly schizo when people talk about, like, oh, the Simpsons predict... But they did, you know, because they put stuff... In those shows, because they, they they don't, there's no set way they have to do it. There's no set way they have to tell you. So they're going to put them out, these ideas out to you, uh, in these contracts, because this is what they are, in the most obscure way they can. So uh, so you don't know you're acquiescing to them. You know, And but the thing is, that's gotten to such a point, the way they finesse people into agreeing to stuff, that I think they're kind of breaking the spiritual law, the spiritual war rules here. Like, how can you expect your average citizen to not damn themselves 
by their actions, there's no way that they would know they're being tricked. You know, uh, free will goes right out the window if you put enough work into the presentation of some of these ideas, contracts, concepts. Pe people don't know. It's like you're, you're, you're cheating, you know? You're tricking them. And I don't think they'll be judged too harshly, some of these people, for making these mistakes. Because what do you fucking expect? You know, this, uh, the world, they, they got the world designed to damn you uh, so perfectly that it's really hard to avoid. You really have to know what's going on. And I didn't really know what was going on, you know, until 10 years ago. I knew some stuff. I had an idea. You know, the, uh, the egg cracked after 7-Eleven, I think the egg cracked for a lot of people. They're like, hey, wait a minute. There's something about this uh, seems kind of fucked up. But I think they knew that was going to happen with people. But the power of the spell and the ritual they cast on that day and what they got out of it, I guess they felt was better in the long term. And, you know, the, the century has played out in a way, you know, where they at least had the capacity to have a more controlled atmosphere that's more um, amiable to them. They don't always execute their plans very well. And it could be a lot worse, but their incompetence is, uh, is helping us <laughs> to a certain degree, you know? Crazy shit, man. That's how I segue into different subjects. Crazy shit. Is it Wednesday morning? A lot of people are here for a Wednesday morning. Usually it's not like, uh, it's not busy until like Thursday and then to the weekend. Thursday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday. That's what's usually busy. But uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, usually kind of quiet. Just had a funny experience leaving Ross with uh, more plastic shit. The, um, this kid came up to me, uh, clean cut, Holly, uh, Caucasian. And um, he's just like, you know where to get blues, man? And I'm like, wow. You know, because I, I used to love the blues, you know? And um, I'm like, I don't know anyone around here anymore, but I directed him to uh, to Chinatown, where they used to have, uh, where the um, black market flea market used to be. I don't know what it's like down there now, though. Like, I don't, I don't buy anything like that anymore. Um, speaking of that, I should have told him about Kratom, you know? Because uh, he didn't look like he was in, like, um, he was in a desperate situation. He was just, he seemed normal, very clean cut, young, maybe, I'd even say, like, 19, 18. It's hard to tell, because everybody under fucking 30 looks... 18 or 19 to me. But, um... I felt bad, you know? He's like, oh, will you go with me? I'm like, dude, I can't. I got, you know, I can't be doing that shit. But, uh... I felt, you know, even telling him I felt bad. But I don't know what he's gonna run into down there. I don't know if there's anything there anymore. Last time I was in Chinatown with Nia, we did, like, a little video, a little series of it, and, uh... It was barren. He was barren down there. And the reason being is because Walmart, I mean Walgreens, is now closed. Back in the day, right, in Chinatown, or right before Chinatown, when you get past the courthouse, from here you would take the 2 bus or the 13 bus, it was just all these uh, sellers. 
just out in the open. They were all selling because in that area are a lot of doctors and a lot of pharmacies. You had Longs across the street and you had Walgreens on the corner and Walmart a couple doors down. So what you'd have in the morning, usually like early, early, like you get there at six o'clock and there'd be people there. Um, yeah, it was like a flea market. You just have groups of people sitting around. There was one lady that was always there in like a little scooter. Uh, I just knew her name as Auntie. Then I had a couple other runners, you know, who I'd meet, like girls I knew that'd be like, hey, how you doing? Can you get me? And I'd ask them. And they would talk to the local people for me. Um, and I knew a couple of local guys too, who uh, I used to work with. And I, I used to buy whatever. You know, when I first moved here, I was still, uh, you know, still getting crazy, doing a lot of different stuff. It's really only been since 2018, after the God thing kicked in, you know. And then, of course, after COVID, it all scattered. But, um, yeah, I've been on and off stuff for a long time. But this is the longest I've gone, maybe ever. It's been like six years, seven years of nothing uh, the occasional smoke but yeah I sent him down there and, and fuck I felt bad I should have just told him about Kratom anyway but like I said he didn't look like he was in a desperate situation he just looked like I don't know what he looked like I felt bad you know what do you do that, that that's a terrible thing to get involved with um, blues are so expensive you know um, what was it back when I was buying them like thirty dollars a piece, I think. So you need at least one or two a day, uh, you know, or more. So you're spending like you know, hundred bucks a day back then. Sucked, sucked. I did that for a long time. You know, I'd supplement it with all other kinds of stuff too, of course. Um, you know how you do when you're when you're a uh, experimenter. But, you know, it's like now it's just like the desire is no longer there, you know. And I drink Kratom coffee, too, so that kills any desire. But, yeah, I've, um, I should tell all my drug stories sometimes because I've had some funny, some funny things with them. Like getting off them, Suboxone almost killed me. <laughs> vomiting blood. I call up the doctor. Hey, I've been vomiting blood. Uh, talking to the nurse. Is that normal? You know, because she's going to come back and say he wants to see you and all this other stuff. I'm waiting. I'm on hold. Waiting on the phone. Yeah, the doctor says that's normal. <laughs> Watching the stream this morning with Liminal Mind. I like his channel. He's got a lot of good stuff on there. He was, uh... He was talking to some guy that had a lot of um, a lot of good things. He was talking about like when you're trying to meditate, which I have a real problem with, uh, because my mind keeps going. You know, it keeps pulling me away. And um, he said they're like lures, like uh, you know, when in fishing, like it's like a, you know, there's a, a lure just hanging there for you to grab. You have to just avoid them. It's hard, you know. I bet. If, if I could concentrate on meditation, I could probably get a lot more information. Or not getting information, I'd remember a lot more because you already have the information, basically. But um, I, instead of waiting for to get it in a shower, or I'm doing something else stupid, it just, things come to me, you know. It's kind of like songwriting, you know, when I used to work on musical. Well, it comes to the same place. It's the universal consciousness, the thing we're all... I'll tap into, but he reminded me, um, we were talking a little while ago about the Bible being a magic book and how uh, Psalms and the spells and Proverbs are how to use them. And um, I couldn't really explain it that well, but I found a guy for him that can explain that really well. He's a bit controversial though, uh, but he knows the shit. It's uh, Damien Eccles. He was one of the uh, West Memphis Three if you know what that is, but um, he uh, he knows a lot about uh, the occult and magic, and um, he explains it pretty well exactly 
how that uh, how that pans out. How the the Bible is just a magic book, like I always say, I passed down to the ages. Um, and I was watching him, and he brought up the Psalms being the spells, the Proverbs being the how to use them thing. And I said, oh, I gotta tell them I don't mind. I guess I could have did this in like a private message. I don't know why I'm talking about it here. <laughs> nice, uh, nice morning here. I love filming in the morning because uh, no one's around. No one's uh, crowding up on me. I don't even have to smoke. You know? Do you think I like to smoke? I don't. I hate it. It's a filthy habit. No, I, I, I enjoy smoking. But it, it does help as a, uh, a security, part of my security system. It keeps people away. You know, whenever I find myself getting aggravated because people are getting too close to me or they're up on my back or I start feeling someone else's arm hair or my arm hair uh, it's always I always realize that oh shit I'm not smoking when you smoke people like will stay the fuck away from you it's gotten so bad like I didn't realize it, how, how much of a pariah you are if you're a smoker or perceived to be it's just uh, it's not socially acceptable <laughs> at all which is fine. I mean, I'll, you know, people get real upset about it too. Like, I'll be just walking up the street or about to cross the street, and the people on the other side that see me, they'll they'll start coughing immediately. You know, just to let me know that they uh, disapprove. And these would be the same people who uh, who just have my health in mind. You know, when like the uh, with the mask thing. You know, bro, you should. You should put it over your nose, bro. Put your mask over your nose. I'm just thinking about your health. Yeah, I've had that literal conversation with people. In my building, too. Like in the elevator. It's for you, man. I'm just thinking about you, man. It's like I've never seen you before in my life. You're a total stranger. It's for me. You really care about me. How's that whole thing working out for them, huh? You know, that every day there's like some new thing talking about how the thing wasn't uh, as uh, safe and effective as they thought it was. Apocalypse Now, Pockets of the Future, did a video um, about some of the new findings and he put out a video about the video <laughs> because they're like hiding it. You know, he, they, I guess they, when he first posted it, they took it down, he had to challenge it and you know, basically, he's not saying anything that's not true. It's just they're not happy about how things turned out. You know, because uh, for a lot of people that knew from the very beginning, like myself and a lot of you guys, I'm sure, that knew exactly what was going on because we recognize patterns and understand how the evil ones work uh, immediately. It was like, oh, this is just AIDS and ACT all over again. You know? And uh, I was thinking that before I even knew that it was the same guy behind both of them. You know, Fauci, the little goblin. Um, so that the, the information that I caught a ban for and that other people were kicked off platforms for could have really helped someone. You know, could have saved lives. It's so weird. Like, I don't think about that that often, that whole situation, because it's, it's such a mind fuck man you know May 2020 looking at everything and just knowing right away like oh this is what they're gonna do and everybody's gonna line up for it and not only line up for it but attack the people that won't that didn't you know there was people who joyfully on social media platforms uh, talked about how what a great idea it is to have a, a two-tier society there's this one guy on Twitter, a writer, I think he's one of the writers for like modern Star Wars their, their shit and he was like, yeah, we'll be eating at a restaurant I'll be having my steak and an anti-vaxxer can 
stand outside and watch us eat. And it got me thinking, like, as they were all going all in on this, a lot of black people didn't take it, you know, because they're kind of a lot more red-pilled about stuff like that because they've been the victim of that kind of stuff for so long, you know, with the government. You know, everyone always mentions the Tuskegee experiment, but, but not just that, like, they've been used, like, as a, as a trial run. Like, well, before we use a real person, we'll do this on a black person. It's fucking crazy. So they're more... They're more red pilled about that stuff, so they weren't, they weren't having it. They weren't taking it, and all these uh, Caucasian liberals, or uh, well, a lot of them were Jews too, who were like talking about having the uh, the two tiered system, and you're gonna be a, you're gonna be lesser than us, using all this really bad kind of terminology because you know they thought they were. They were just talking about white people. It's like, if this gets applied to that group, it's going to be a bad look for all these people. <laughs> you know, because, uh, yeah, Th that connection was never made, though. You know, because uh, as, as oppressive as all that shit was, it was also very deftly done. You know, these social media companies, uh, they know what they want. You know, they know what, what they're going to allow and what they're not going to allow. This is a line for coffee in the morning. It's not crazy. It must be good. I've never had it here before, but every morning, like, there's this line right here at the machine that goes all the way into the mall. And there are other places around here. Not not many. Admittedly, there's not, there's not a lot of places. But, uh, yeah, this one is jam-packed every morning. Never been probably good but yeah there was uh, you know people like myself were putting out things that were information that might have gotten someone to think twice about it maybe I don't know possibly at least we were trying we were getting banned shut down Time goes on, time's gone on now, and we see that, uh, unfortunately, let me drop the cigarette here, uh, we were 200% right, like about everything, and um, they're slowly leaking this out, but from what I picked up, from what I was told, is that they want people to know, they want people to find out, um, but they're doing it in a controlled way. Uh, because the idea is part of one of the, the parts of the evil plan or possible evil plan is that the, they want people to turn on their own governments or their own, you know, state government. It's more that uh, chaos situation. So then they can then come in, swoop in with their order for their order out of chaos. You know, that's why they're doing what they're doing through a lot of Western cities, the violence and the agitators that are put in places. A lot of military here. I wonder why. Is it a holiday? Could be a holiday. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, these are these are uh, military losses. When was King Kamehameha Day? Did that already go by, or is it upcoming? There's so many, like, things that go on here that, like, I, I don't know until it's happening. Until I go up to go to the store, and I can't move because there's tons of people there. I don't know. I'm not very abreast of those kind of things. I can tell you everything about what's going on in the schizo world currently, though, and that's, you know, that's my wheelhouse. That's our wheelhouse. And life's better for it. Fuck, imagine like worried about real world concerns. I only bring them up when they overlap, you know? But uh, yeah, I, I've been living in the real world for 52 years. I'm not about to start now. Thanks for dropping in until next time.
Don't find the teacher. Find the school. Oh, we just get done. Oh, there you are, yeah. Hey, guys. How are you, buddies?